list. And then that'll just bring up a list for you and you can see when people pop in and it'll have a little admit button next to their name. Okay, so now you'll know who's all in there. Okay, so Kathy's there, right? Uh -huh. she, yep, she's there. Okay. Yep. All right. All right. Okay. I'll be Thank here you. for a few more minutes. Okay. <laughs> I do these so far and few in between that. Okay, I think we'll get that for you. Uh, <laughs> okay. All right. Is she muted? Do we keep her muted? Or? Kathy? Yeah. She probably she muted herself. herself. Yeah, she could do it herself. I'm, well, I was muted. Now I'm not. But hi, everybody. Hi. Okay, I'll call this meeting to order. This is the Big Pack or Bicycle Pedestrian Advisory Committee, a regular meeting for is it May 19th. And I'm going to take roll here. See, besides myself and Joanna, for our city staff. All right, Todd. Oh, and here comes Todd. We go around the table. It's a roll call. Bart Smith. Yeah. Uh, Mark Nakamura. Mm -hmm. or, uh, that. Yep. <laughs> That's my name. <laughs> Sorry about the peripheral vision. And we'll introduce Renee in a sec. Um, and then online, I see Kathy. Kathy, Jackie. Renee, small, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I've taken roll call, uh, sort of. <laughs> oral, oral requests. You know, th this is a time where folks from the public are here can um, speak out, mention any uh, issues or items that uh, need to be brought before the staff. It's, it's not an agendized item, therefore we can't really discuss it, but we can take it back with us. Or do we have any oral requests? Okay. Um, seeing none, we'll move on to approval of minutes. You should have received the eight minutes from March. Uh, any comments? One of the fall through items was just agendized. Yep. Let's talk about that. Saw blind, that. Blind spot. Very good. Um, well, do we have a motion to approve the minutes for March? I move. Second. All those in favor? Say yeah. aye. 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 Are we missing somebody? Are we missing? Uh, David. David. Mm -hmm. okay. I, think, I think he told me that he was going to be out of, okay. out of town. Actually, yes, he's out of the country. Yeah. Oh. Okay, so I forgot about that. Okay. Item four, welcome to the back member. Oh, uh, our staff has been busy in between meetings. You know, uh, this is Renee Small. Um, could you give like a, a one minute intro? Okay. <laughs> Time's up. <laughs> Hi. For those of you that didn't interview me, um, I've been a long time Campbell resident. I now have a high schooler. I was on the Campbell Park and Rec Commission years ago, and um, I enjoy. Campbell as the community and city that it is. And I'm always looking forward to um, helping in any way I can. Nice to meet you. Welcome aboard. Thank yeah. you. Welcome aboard. Okay, a normal part of our uh, meeting agenda is to go over ongoing projects. Mm -hmm. To keep the pay packet form, uh, solicit uh, information that, that we need if, if need be. So the first project we have on our agenda is the Harriet Avenue sidewalk project. And well, exciting news, the project is currently being advertised uh, for bids. So, so the contractors are, should be aware of the project. 
and the bid opening is scheduled for June 8th. That's, uh, yeah, I can add a little bit on that one too, and that, that, that's the construction part of it. So in advance of the construction phase, there was actually some considerable utility work that needed to be done. So over the last six or eight months, we've actually been working with PG&E, AT&T and Comcast because power poles, or I should say utility poles had to be relocated for us to do the project that we wanna do, which is to put the sidewalk in so it becomes a, a, a safe route to school, makes it more pedestrian friendly. So the advanced utility work has been done for a couple of weeks and now we're gonna do our portion of the work. And the scope of work entails uh, sidewalk infill on the west side of the portion of Harry Avenue to South Westmont Avenue. Okay. Sometimes called Old Harriet. Old Harriet. It's a, it's a narrow Harriet. Ah, it's the one that everybody speeds down. <laughs> really? as, as opposed to the other portion? <laughs> or south of that. Yeah, it's not the south white portion. It's not the white section between um, what's what's the side street where we put the hawk at? McCoy. Avenue. It's not the McCoy to Westmont section. It's the little offset section closer to the high school. Okay. Um, that then runs south to Van Dusen. Okay. Right. Right. And uh, the improvements will be focused on the west side where we have sufficient right of way. So there'll be a good walking path to the high schoolers. Yeah. Um, in addition, there will be marking some sharrows uh, along uh, the entire stretch. That was a word I had to look up. Oh, there there you go. <laughs> yes. Okay. okay. You're going to hear that one a lot. <laughs> I guess I noticed it in the notes, but I'm just saying I, I had to Google it. Well, uh, the second project uh, for which we have update is fiscal year 22, the annual paving maintenance, pavement maintenance project. And the portion that um, was brought before the BPAC was West Park Avenue. We made some uh, corrections based on your comments for where to place the sheriffs. The update is that construction has begun with concrete repair and installation of ADA curb ramps, I assume. That being the first order of work. Striping work, including the new sheriffs, is anticipated to take place in August and September. So it'll be a while. Okay. Uh, third project is the citywide Safe Routes to School. Uh, this is kind of jumbled up. Uh, it was a citywide bike map project. That's been we last meeting. We already said that we were pretty much finished with that, and we're in the process of trying to get that map on our website. But what we want to do is, uh, in addition to having the website, to to have a questionnaire for people. How did they find the map, um, how useful was it to them? Um, what were they, what, why, what drew them to the map? Those kinds of questions. And this was the, like the general plan style map, right? Right. Cool. Right. Yeah. The other half of this project is what I'm focusing on is the Safe Process School maps. We had um, decided to focus on three schools this fiscal year. And um, the progress is we've worked with our city attorney's office to prepare a cost share agreement with the two cities that are sharing those schools with the city of Campbell. So there's a cost share agreement with town of Los Gatos and one with the city of San Jose. I just distributed those uh, draft cost share agreements to my colleagues in the city to let them uh, contact their own uh, legal counsel and we can work out the wording and once we're done, then we can move towards executing um, and, and finishing off the scope of work and then hiring the consultant. Progress, finally. Love it. Now, what are the three schools? Uh, Rosemary Elementary yep. School, Forest Hill mm -hmm. Elementary School, and Rolling Hills Middle School. So there's really two in San Jose 
than one shared with Los Gatos. Gotcha. Then we'll, hopefully we'll polish off the remaining uh, schools that are in Campbell Union School District next to school year. And is it possible to maybe publicize this like on the city social media accounts? I think it's really ready for the website and once the questionnaire is ready to go live too. Because I think that would be a great item for your social media accounts to come out. Agreed. Good idea. That way we'll get more responses. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the next project is the Campbell Priority Development Area or PDA enhancements project. A few years ago, we had a consultant prepare a, uh, what do you call a capital improvement plan mm -hmm. for pedestrian and bicycle type improvements in the historic downtown area. And we were using that the study that came out of that, um, that effort as a means of securing future grant funding oh. to, to uh, get improvements installed in downtown and it's it starting to materialize in that uh, we did secure funds for the design phase of the project and um, this year very soon there's going to be a call for projects for uh, what they call the one day area grant uh, it'll be the third cycle of that grant and what we're ho hoping for is that'll be an opportunity to uh, pursue funds for the construction phase of the project. And uh, it entails things like uh, improving the intersection of Civic Center and Harris next to the, the library. Mm -hmm. It's a very skewed intersection and it's confusing to pedestrians because one leg is signalized, the other is the, the right turns from Harris and Arc really controlled, which is the field side, but that's about it. So we want to square off that intersection to slow traffic down. Oh, thank you. Oh, oh you didn't receive, okay. But anyway, um, there's also proposed improvements at two other intersections on Civic Center Drive at 2nd Street and 3rd Street, where there's been a history of uh, broadside crashes. And, uh, so we want to make improvements at those intersections then on Orchard City Drive, near the light rail station, uh, the proposed improvements, including uh, a flashing beacon system to enable people who are leaving the light rail station or going toward the light rail station. Press a button, a strobe light will turn on. Uh, we have a similar type of strobe light near the community center and Avenue Milton. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. a similar type of, of uh, device we're proposing at Orchard City Drive and Central Avenue and uh, some sidewalk improvements and replacing what we have right now are striped islands, kind of like diagonal striped mm -hmm. islands at the corners, uh, replace them with an actual hardscape, either a spot island or a bulb out, probably a spot island. But so um, we can, yeah, do have funding for the design phase and we will be approaching the city council on June 7th, uh, seeking authorization to issue an RFP for uh, hiring a design consultant, advertising or, uh, or requesting proposals. So that's coming up with the RFP for design services, June 7th. Okay, item six, moving right along, is the blind spot on Los Gatos Creek Trail just north of the Xbox Expressway. What I will do, I'm gonna look up online our, our agenda package. Then analyze this as agenda center. Yeah. 
this. Let's go to BPAC for our agenda package, which is this one. And the agenda package, once it gets on the screen, then I will share my screen. Otherwise, nobody knows what, I'm, what, what, what the public will see what we're seeing here in the conference room. Okay, share the screen. Do you all see a slideshow with photos? <coughs> Great. This was brought to our attention by Matt. The photo is facing southbound on the Las Gatas Creek Trail as one rides towards Santa Mas Expressway. This is the abutment wall for the expressway. The expressway is a bridge over the creek trail. If one's riding southbound, can't see oncoming uh, bicyclists or pedestrians in the opposite direction because of the wall. And there's kind of a jog uh, to the right. So there's a blind corner here. Oh, these are not in the correct order. Um, well, anyway, this is facing northbound as you're coming out of, out from underneath the expressway bridge. And here again, you can't see someone in the opposite direction. We just happened to be present with the camera when we saw this happening. <laughs> uh, this is not staged. This is <laughs> two different bicyclists opposing each other. And, well, they got a one's got to yield to the other. The northbound guy had a motorized bike. That's it. So here, here are some of the uh, challenges for this site, and, and this is what we shared with the county of Santa Clara. Uh, yeah, county roads and airports because it's um, <clears throat> we have to involve them because it involves their uh, facilities. The trail traffic cannot see traffic in the opposite direction. Striping, striping alone, it wouldn't be effective uh, in a dark tunnel. And frankly, it, the path is only five feet wide. You can't really stripe a line, and uh, it would make the two different directions too narrow. So there's limited locations also. Where can you install the signs from the previous photos? You see that it's really, it's all concrete. You can't plunge a signpost into concrete. And then we were contemplating, well, what kind of messages do we want to consider? And this is where I consulted with professional colleagues as well as with um, with Matt, and he suggested, what well, we well, we'll run through for the BPAC. So here we are. These are just samples of what we found. Some are standard, some are not. actually none of these are, are standard wording. And so you look at from left to right. Sample A, watch for oncoming traffic. And I already see somebody nodding. <laughs> no, not that one. I don't like it. Confusing. It sounds like car traffic. Yeah. Okay. Sign B, blind corner, bike slow down. Sign C, by the way, these aren't, ex uh, let's say exclusive, we could kind of mix the wording. Mm -hmm. This is just samples. Sign C, blind corner, proceed with caution. D, as you notice, it's a different shape. The diamond, you kind of connotes uh, a warning warning sign. But this shape is different, rectangular. It's a slow, blind corner, proceed with caution. You notice, you notice the, the sign panel has yellow letters on black background. That's unusual. You, you really don't see that uh, in standard signs. And then the final example <coughs> is blind corner, proceed with caution. Same message, but different shape. And I guess the writing's a little bit, would be a little bit bigger on the rectangular one. The, the letters, I mean, on your example, the letters are bigger. Are those to scale or? That's a good question. Um, these are merely grabbed from the internet. 
So there, there isn't necessarily scale. I do have, to, before we go back, we'll go back to these messages. I'll just share with you, this is what we were proposing to the county that we would furnish and install the signs, probably glue them onto the abutment walls. And it, you'll see photos after this. The signs would have anti-graffiti coating because they're a target. Um, and uh, Campbell would maintain the signs. And this is where we were thinking, where can we put the signs? There's no place for a sign post. So we could glue it on the wall. Similar to, if, you, if you're familiar with the downtown parking garage on 2nd Street, we have signs glued on the wall there as well. Um, so imagine having a sign on one side as you're traveling southbound. And then if you're going north before you reach the expressway, there's really no place to put the sign. So we thought, well, the only place to put it is on the left side. Is there someone there? Can you I, think, I think there is. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That, that illustrates how it's hard to see. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so that is <clears throat> now going back to here. Uh, let's open yeah. it up. For, yeah. Is there a place anywhere to put a convex mirror? That was one of the first measures we were considering. The feedback that we got from our maintenance staff is that's not a good idea. That it, it would, although functionally it might work, maintenance wise, it would become an ongoing issue of vandalism. And yeah. Broke, broke that's what I was kind of afraid of. I mean, I've seen them try and put lights like under the 101 um, underpass on Guadalupe and homeless people tear them down sometimes, a lot of times oh. actually. But I, I wanted to put that out there to see if it had been talked about. Um, and a, another thing, um, I tweeted it out when I saw the agenda uh, because I know a lot of people um, uh, would probably be interested in this. I mean, I ride this thing all the time and I always, you know, I, I ring my bell both in both directions before I get there, I slow down, ring my bell. Um, not a whole lot of people do, unfortunately. But uh, one of the comments that I got, um, you know, it actually has to do with children who probably aren't going to pay attention to signage. And they said, um, I, have a, uh, I have a couple of these near me, you know, blind corners. And uh, they said, I go slow and ring my bell entering and leaving, but careening eight year olds can't put that into context in the moment nor can they hold their lane on weird turns. So there have been some close calls. So that's something to also consider. Okay. Yeah, there, there for example, there is a, one of those convex mirrors on uh, Stevens Creek Trail. Uh, I don't remember the exact spot or if it's uh, before you get to the baby trail anyway. Uh, and I, I, I mean, I definitely use that one. It give, does give you visibility if, if anybody's coming from. It's a similar kind of corner. There's an over, there's a over, yeah, there over crossing there, and it is about like that angle. But and you can definitely see if somebody's um, supposed to be the other side before you get to the corner. So it's it's useful at least. And I, I don't know, I. Almost every week, go there. And it's well, it's been there for a year or so at least. This seems to be still working. Is it, but I think it, you, the difficulty here is how, how you're going to mount it. It has to be mounted off the, off of the fence there, and I'm, that might be a you know difficulty for for uh, you know installing it. Is it as dark as it is here? It's it is shaded. Yeah, it is shaded because uh, it's the overcrossing. Yeah. yeah, I don't think it maybe it's the dark. This is one underneath this, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. And I don't think it's a long you know, stretch in the shaded section. It's very short. Yes, it doesn't have the long narrow thing in, in front of it. It's fairly short on the one side. Yeah. When you're heading north, it's. Uh, That'd be something to consider. I, I mean, I prefer the signage. The signage is going to tell them to slow down and pretty much yes. say, hey, go. Yeah, 
I think uh, take a chill pill, whereas the worthwhile. Yeah, yeah. Whereas like maybe the mirror will encourage people to speed up if they can glance at it and say it's free, <laughs> yeah. and then they like don't look at it correctly. So, so well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I, say, I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend just the mirror for sure. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I think the signs are definitely yeah, valuable. I think the sign for me it's a great start, and then based off the feedback, maybe consider a mirror but i vote for moving forward with c or that would be my recommendation even though that kind of indicates it's unsafe so i don't know if the city is happy with that but either b is pretty declarative it's like yo slow down i actually like I, the contrast on d d what, what kathy d yeah the contrast the, the contrast on d is is visually is visually jarring yeah but i like what matthew said in terms of like the that triangle being more associated with like it's a conscious yeah there we go yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. that's the shape they use for businesses and everything else those the you know, hazardous material things as well so um i personally like anything that's the more information, the better. So if we stick with a sign that's a uh, diamond shaped, is there a place to put two, like a war, you know, upcoming farther up the trail saying you're you're approaching a blind corner? Because at that point, yeah. when you see that sign, you're already at the blind corner. So, and, you know, I haven't, this is my first meeting. So I was wondering if there's a way to put uh, another warning sign ahead of time. You could put that. E at the gate by the dog park and then at the top too yeah. on the opposite side. I mean, that would be a compromise. Yeah. It'd be, yeah. well, I guess notice how far, uh, you know, how big is the sign? How far away is the distance that you can read it and that it would get somebody's attention? I, I think you can probably read that sign from the, from the top of the, so going north, I think you could probably read that sign from the top of the ramp. Oh, I agree uh so i think that would be plenty of notices in that direction anyway that direction is not so difficult right because it doesn't have to, to try to from the other direction well again from the top you come up to, if you're going south you go up the hill if you can read it from where you first start down to it i think that's probably effective enough I think that's the question. If yeah. you can read if it's, it, if it, then it would yeah. keep your attention. Yeah. If it's, but if it's yellow and on that wall, it's pretty attention getting, and it's right where you're looking. You're going to go. I don't, I don't know about the size, but you know, the if you get the regular size that's made for roads, you know, they're made to be read because they're made for cars that are going yeah. faster. Right? They're made to be read fairly far away. I guess I, I suppose they're probably a standard. It should be readable from whatever. Distance right in. I think that would be plenty if it was a car, the same kind they use for roads. Yeah, if it's like the big. It's pretty big. They're pretty big. Stop yeah. sign size, or is it smaller? I'm guessing it's a similar dimension, probably 36 inches on each side. And that, that, that's pretty large. That's, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I never measured one. I mean, I think we'd have to also look at that. Uh, northbound direction because you've got a seam in the concrete yeah you have a certain width that's right. flat. So we might have to confine it to that right. panel like you can see it if you look at the uh oops the other side yeah see how you've got that seam you probably can't glue across if you glue across that you're going to compromise it yes so we might have to see what it it would have to go like exactly where you have it yeah and just kind of maximize it so it doesn't go into that gap uh -huh. Uh -huh. and, but we don't know what size that well i think we is. would do the maximum that we could to, to fit there right yeah so, we'll, you know whatever that so i guess we should measure which you know those uh i was talking to you about those uh speed bump signs so how big are they any idea i think those are 36 36 yeah but well, that would be plenty big but maybe we don't have that much here I guess some, I guess we've got to make, go measure that. Yeah, something tells me this is a lot wider than it looks because this is taken from a distance. Right. Yeah. 
Um, well, yeah, if that, you, you that make it, way you make it five, 36 in there. If that pathway is five feet, then yeah. rough that looks yeah. roughly. Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be close. When I'm saying 36 inches, it's the side of the panel. 36 here. So it would be a little more than that. Yeah. Wow. So this was just like <clears throat> the hypotenuse. <laughs> Now we have yeah. to do math. Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't in the, that was not. Nine plus nine <laughs> is square root of two. So it's more than four. That would be four feet across. Yeah. Is there no existing MUTCD sign that says, I mean, I'm just kind of Googling right now, that says they, blind corner? They had something like a, a down arrow and an, uh, an up arrow on the same panel to oh, symbolize really? there's, that there's two direct <laughs> traffic. That's that's what I'm saying. Useless. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> I could of course, I think you're right for these unique circumstances. In fact, yeah. I did I did post this on a we call it discussion forum of traffic engineers. Yes, there one there is one that this. <laughs> um, and got answers from all over all over the place. Um, okay. I think we got better information the more I had to explain that how wide. Or how narrow the path is, and then that took the striping out of the equation. And uh, there was some concern about, like what you were saying, that would the city feel comfortable by saying it's almost the same as putting up a sign that says "dangerous, yeah. unsafe"? <laughs> <laughs> Intersection is it's just not the right message. Um, but I'm, I'm, I welcome your comments because. It's like, what are your impressions? If you were a bicyclist, is this the right message to get across? So, so thus far, I'm hearing if there's any kind of response, it's the the message of B or C. Oh, how do you feel about when it's bike slow down? Is, it, is that like? Uh, um. Is that accusatory or? I, I think it does. I think, you know, blind corner applies to both, you know, to all types of people using the trail. Um, I guess it really, I mean, probably pedestrians are not such the issue there, but skaters might, would be equally. Yeah, so yeah, that's dangerous the, for a skater to go yeah. down that hill and uh, you could remove just that like blind corner, but then it like, re, I don't know how it Because people formats. were walking, they would be like, well, why do I? Well, I'm going slow enough. The same precaution sort of covers. Yeah. 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 Covers it. I also like that it's got the bolder font. I don't know if that's just like the image, but I don't know. That reads it, more it filled, clearly. It filled the space a little. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably because the letter height's bigger. Uh, yeah. It's taller. taller. And because of that, the thickness of the letters is, is also thicker. I like it. So it's okay. So it's sounding like. The uh, sign. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. I was going to say I like the idea. Maybe just on the north side of having a sign at the top of the hill, because that side is, is much shorter and it's usually shaded by the trees. So um, I think you may not see it. And usually I've encountered a lot of people going down there, which makes it the sight line is tighter. It may be obscured by people. For people coming up the trail or something. So I think that would be a good case for a second sign at the gate, maybe a good idea. Okay. I agree. I like just pepper and own messaging. It's not going to be too much. Okay. Better to over communicate. Yeah. Sign E too for the top. Oh. On the on the little gate there. I think that would be yeah. I don't know. I think that fits better there. But I think on the other side near the dog park, that side is usually always sunny and clear, and it's a lot longer. So I think it's easier to see that sign that will be on the bucket wall there. So, so that's why I don't think it's really necessary near the dog. Okay, what we're going to do, County uh, Roads and Airport was open to our idea as long as we settle on a message. And then Bill prepare, will give us instructions on how to uh, apply for an encroachment permit since we're going to be gluing signs on their, their property. Sweet.
Okay. So uh, we'll, we'll follow through on that. I think the gate on the north side is ours. We can put the one on the right. <coughs> we're not going to bother the county with, with stuff. Yeah, just for the handle. two that we're going to glue on. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, Here. I think that's a pretty good solution. Okay. I will. I'm going to continue to share my screen because uh, the next item is. Um, the requirement for an upcoming call for projects for the what I mentioned earlier, it's called the One Bay Area Grant Cycle Three or OBAG Three. Uh, for each candidate project, uh, the applicants, meaning the cities, are supposed to submit, fill out and submit what's called a complete streets checklist uh, for each project that's being proposed. For City of Campbell, we have two proposed projects. Let's see what we have here. The first one is what I mentioned earlier, the Campbell PDA Enhancements Project, the, the pedestrian and bicycle type improvements in the historic downtown area. And <clears throat> before I walk through this checklist, as well as the next project would be a paving project on the entire stretch of Hamilton Avenue, is the checklist was a final draft, as you see on the screen. What happened was this week we received another final draft. <laughs> so it's slightly, slightly different. And the only, I'll summarize verbally the difference. Um, and actually I'll show it to you quickly. And then we'll, I'll show it to you quickly and then we'll circle back and start from the very beginning. Um, under safety and comfort, the question does this, if the project, where is this? Okay, this question here, if the project includes a bike way, uh, was any suitability level of traffic stress or similar user experience analyses conducted? They added, before this question, does the project seek to improve bicyclists and or pedestrian conditions? I think that's kind of a given. Um, okay, so we might need to reconsider this because right now it says yes, no. Okay, so this is, we answered it based on was there any analysis conducted? And we said no, but now they're adding a, how do you answer that question then? Because it's two questions. Sounds like it's two and one. Um, wonderful. Okay, well, that's the first change. And we'll, we'll try to capture that when we walk through each of these checklists. It's required that we submit these checklists with the comments from the VPAC uh, and submitted to the MTC. The second change was, Design. Okay, right after this box or this row, there was a new row added called the topic was called equity. The question is will the project improve active transportation in an equity priority community? An equity priority community. I will just give it a loose definition. Um, it's a community of disadvantaged uh, populations that may have been discriminated against historically um, and have that designation uh, officially. It's not something you just make up. You have to declare it as a, as a what they call an EPC or equitable uh, equity priority community. The only EPC in the city of Campbell is the area that's encompassed by Santa Mas Expressway on the west side, Winchester on the east, north of Hamilton. So it's that neighborhood right next to Rosemary Elementary School. Imagine that's the only agri priority community. So if we're going to answer this question, Hamilton Avenue does cut right through. It does serve that neighborhood. The PDA enhancement project isn't really close to that area. So I wouldn't 
I wouldn't say that it really serves that, that community. Um, so that, that's going to be a question added. And what they did to this uh, form is they took away these two, the, the following two rows, measuring performance and operation, operations and maintenance. They just deleted that from the checklist. So, so we'll keep that in mind as we walk through both of these. So the first checklist is for that Campbell PDA enhancer project. At the very beginning, it's, it's really a project identification. Give the title, when was the form submitted? What's the project location? It's the, the two Loop Street Civic Center Drive and Orchard City Drive. And Campbell Avenue is the short, the short stretch just east of Winchester Boulevard to 4th Street. It's where it connects with Civic Center Drive, essentially. So that's the, that's the project location. The description, there wasn't enough room to type it in. So we added what we call supplement. <clears throat> the supplement at the end of the checklist And we gave the, the, the project description. It's very lengthy. Um, just, it's just giving a setting. It is two one-way arterials, uh, lanes, what are the, the uh, where does it provide connections? The project will include pedestrian bicycle improvements such as a narrowing curb ramps, crosswalks, bike marking, sharrows, flashing beacons, uh, sidewalk installations, signal line. Uh, I'm crazy about that wording. Signal modification, um, ball belts, and spot idols. It's a lot of going back and forth. Hopefully you had a chance to look at this ahead of time. Um, the active transportation network, there was a map that was, it wasn't necessarily finalized when we prepared this form. It just got I think it got updated, but also MTC has extended the deadline for comments on that map. We suggested adding Hamilton Avenue and, and the Loop Streets and Campbell Avenue to that active check. And that's that reason we could play yes. The uh, project area does serve that network. Um, safety and comfort. So uh, is the project on a known high injury network? And we said, it's not, it really isn't. Um, and if the project you, includes a bike waste, was any level of traffic stress um, or similar user experience analyses conducted? We came across, uh, there are different websites um, that assign a level of traffic stress from one to four scale, four being the worst, and four associated with uh, high speed and or high volume roadways without a bike lane. Mm -hmm. So to me, it was kind of easy to label this as four. Yeah. And, um, I think the same goes for Hamilton Avenue because there's some parts that don't have bike lanes. Um, but we didn't necessarily do an analysis. Uh, it was more comparing a scale with what we observed. Okay, and then I mentioned earlier under safety and comfort, the form which isn't for fun here, but they added a question, does the project seek to improve 
life and close and well, I guess the answer to yes. Does the project seek to improve bicyclists and or pedestrian conditions? I think what we'll have to do is refer them again to the supplement and add wording. Okay, move right along. Transit coordination. Are there public transit facilities, bus stops, or stations abutting the project right away? Yes. Uh, on on uh, the two loop streets as well as the Ham. Later on, we're going to look at the Hamilton Habit project. The answer is yes. Have all potentially affected transit agencies had the opportunity to review this project? No, really not. Uh, the BTA hasn't seen our we haven't submitted a grant application yet, um, but we do refer to the supplement under item C. So let's thumb down again. So is the is the scope of this proposal such that you would have to submit it to to, to uh, BTA? Yes, you will have to. Yes, and BTA will convene a scoring committee to score all the projects. Um, so eventually, I think what they're concerned about at, at this point, though, is make sure that if there is anything proposed that will affect their facilities, they didn't know about it. Right. And so at this point, uh, we haven't reviewed what their, let's say, their operational staff, um, these projects. On the other hand, it's, our projects won't really impact their facilities. It's, uh, it may, well, let's say when we get to the design phase, the portion of the PDA project where we have funds right now is the design phase. We will talk to them about, uh, for example, Orchard City Drive. There's a bus duck out near the light rail station. We should talk to them about that just to let them know what we have in mind. Hopefully, it, it, what, we, what we design works well with their buses. So yeah, eventually we will contact them. I mean, we just haven't gotten that far in the process. Uh, I don't see. So active transportation network. Uh, oh, wait a minute. We're looking for uh, item D. Transit coordination. Are there existing public transit facilities? Yes. So this is this bus line, as well as the, uh, oops, the light rail station down that cow, um, have all potentially uh, affected transit agencies had the opportunity to review. No project is going to be designed by October uh, 2023. And uh, the BTA will have the opportunity to review. Is there a mobility hub? All light rail stations are called mobility hubs. So I said, yes, and I'm referring to the downtown Campbell White Rail Station. Okay, let me try to go a little bit quicker because this is gonna take a long time if we want to, but um, so, so we kind of have been walking through this part, moving on. Does the project meet professional design standards? It will. I mean, why wouldn't we? Um, measuring performance. Does your agency have plans to track the impact of the project over time? Um, I'm just going to take a look really quick. City plans to compare crash histories before and after. That's one means of, of measuring performance. Okay, and then operations and maintenance. What agency 
department will be responsible for ongoing, well, city council, of course. Um, has the local BPAC review. So I'm anticipating today's meeting, A19. Uh, I forgot, these two were, were deleted from the checklist. So ignore these two. Um, and the added row was for equity. Will the project improve active transportation and equity priority community? In this case, no, it's not near an EPC. Okay, then statement of compliance. The proposed project complies with all applicable complete streets policies and laws. Yes. The project includes segments of the regional active transportation network and will provide facilities that meet all ages and abilities. I had to say no because this is very specific in how they define. So let's go to item G. The cost of providing complete streets improvements are excessively disproportionate to the need or probable use, defined as more than 20% of the complete streets elements of the pro total project cost to accommodate protected bike lanes. This is what they're asking for, for it to be for all ages and users. Protected bike lanes on Civic Center Drive, Orchard City Drive, and Campbell Avenue. Either the following or combination thereof must take place. Remove on street parking, remove one traffic lane, or widen the curb to curb the street. Impacts to the downtown businesses would make removing on street parking unfeasible. Removing a traffic lane on these streets would create operational impacts that local to local transportation, including commute and bus traffic. Widening any street would require costly demolition, utility relocation, sidewalk curb and gutter work that was not anticipated or envisioned. So those are the reasons why we had to make a statement of exemption. Um, so this, let me see if I understand this correctly. There's sort of imp implication here that if you're going to make any kind of improvement on this piece of street, they want you to improve everything. <laughs> is that, is that, Let's is, say if, is, if is they're that, scoring, MTC ultimately will have the final decision. Yes. BTA will have a scoring committee and they'll have a priority list of projects. Okay. Uh -huh. They'll submit to MTC. MTC will make the final call at which projects get funded, they'll probably favor those that provide everything. Well, it would be correspondingly expensive. Yeah, that's true. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Yes, that is true. Yeah, I mean, I just, yeah. So, and basically here, the, the, like on the, on the Orchard City Drive, you know, you're improving safety of pedestrians by the changing of the shape of the road, for example, and those kind of things, right? So those are, of course, to the good, but yes, you're not doing all these other things. Right? I suppose we could still highlight what we are doing rather than say what we aren't doing. Yeah. Maybe, let me write that down as a comment. <laughs> is, uh, so this is for- Yeah, this. appendix can you say, well, you are doing these things that, that so, okay. right. make this, Street more uh, useful as for night transportation. It's highlight. Just what we can. Okay, that's good that we're taking this through together. Um, Statement of exemption, the affected roadway is legally or pro legally prohibited for use of bicycle. No, that's not the case. So there's no exemption here. 
the cost of complete streets, providing complete streets improvements are excessively disproportionate um, to the need for probable use, more than 20% of the complete street elements of the total project cost. And that's where we were looking at item G. Oops. Um, oh, wait a minute. That's strange. Somehow the words disappear. <clears throat> Is there other than you are undo function? Yeah, where's your undo? Yeah, this is all online, so uh, I don't know why <laughs> I shouldn't be able to edit something online. That's weird. Um, well, I'm not going to say this anyway. Um, this is merely, you know, what we got online. There is documented alternative plan. No, we didn't check this off. And the same thing conditions exist in which policy requirements cannot be met, such as fire safety. So, so that is the checklist for the PDA project. We take a breath and, and pause. Are there any questions or, or comments? You're talking only about the PDA project still, right? So questions or comments about that project specifically? No, I think you could check the box. Okay, gave it to BPEC. <laughs> <laughs> and they loved it. And they loved it. <laughs> Ray, you're still happy to be on the BPEC. <laughs> Um, okay, uh, promise you'll be more excited. Um, <laughs> so we will scroll to the next project. Fortunately, we only have two projects. Uh, imagine other agencies have multiple, multiple projects that are going to be filling this out. Um, the Hamilton Avenue uh, Street Resurfacing Project. Essentially, it's, it's resurfacing the west city limits to the east city limits. And exactly what this says. Uh, um, so. <laughs> that is so weird. I shouldn't be able to do this. Um, what we're trying to show here is we're applying for construction funds. We, we, we have sufficient funds to design. Um, and then we're referring again to this supplement. It's, pr it's pretty similar as far as, okay, project consistent with the plan. Whereas the, the PDA plan, we could cite the TIPSI study. We didn't have a similar project specific plan. Ex so we cited the, Cal the, the Campbell general plan. And uh, in fact, I will scroll down but I didn't really cover with the other project I can show here. We also cited in the general plan what policies and goals are can show that this project is consistent. Access to transit, improve access to both, to both bus and light rail uh, stations, but go in evaluating opportunities with development proposals and capital improvement projects. So that's what we're doing with uh, the Helm project. We probably cited the same strategy in the PDA uh, enhancements project. Um, the goal of achieving a safe, balanced, and functional multimodal transportation network. Uh, so these are all good things that we have already in our general plan. Let's go back. We check off the box, yes. I will double check the, the, the map. Um, that was another bug. They provided a link to this active transmission network map, but you have to have Windows 10 or later to be able to see the map. And I have Windows 7, so I couldn't open up the map, um, but I'll, I'll borrow a laptop and take a look again. Um, Safety and comfort. Um, 
I guess that's another is uh, 3D. Yes, we improve uh, bicyclists and for pedestrian conditions. Meaning, I mentioned earlier, they added a question right above. Does the project seek to improve bicyclists and for pedestrian conditions? Um, it says no, but I'm going to say yes to the first part. Um, okay. So we didn't really do it well, again, analysis, but we put it at the worst level. Oh, there's more. Um, transit coordination, kind of same thing. We haven't really talked to DTA. Um, but it is providing connection to the facilities, bus stops along the way. And there is a Hampton Light Rail station, um, mm -hmm. a mobility hub. Uh, we will meet design standards, measure of performance. But this is a little bit different. It's not a big deal. Is we get the advantages. Every other year, we count traffic at specific intersections, major intersections on Hamilton Avenue. It's part of our, what they call a congestion management program monitoring uh, that's done every other year. So we do have access to traffic counts, oops, touch, um, traffic counts. And um, so we'll be able to compare before and after the project. And sometimes those, those counts do include um, bike lines. Uh, it's, it's for the PM peak hour. So we offered that to the LTC. Uh, operations and maintenance. What agencies were found? Okay, it's city council, it's pretty obvious. Okay, feedback review, yes. Statement of compliance. The project uh, will provide, it's a similar answer for this one of, of uh, We couldn't provide uh, protected bikeways on Hamilton. What I do envision, though, is some, I'm not sure what we would do, but similar to what we did on, on Manchester Boulevard, where at least we added some like, green bike lane elements, at least to try to highlight the, the conflict areas. I see. I've seen other like interchanges. I'm, I'm thinking about Hamilton Avenue. That's really challenging portion uh, over Highway 17. But I, I, I've seen some more modern um, interchanges. Let's say interchanges that have been upgraded recently where they have painted some um, broken green bike ramps. Yeah, ramps. especially, yeah, across the um, on and off ramps. And that's going to be our big concern, particularly eastbound. You know, you kind of get those two dedicated lands. So we're going to have to figure out how how we might traverse that. <laughs> but yeah. those kinds of situations where you know you've got the the, the green bike with the bike lane on the inside, and then it's got a you've got an exit only lane, and you got to somehow get a broken green across that to get you back on the, the right side of the, of the other lane. Those those things that you were talking about, the green, the, for example, uh, Highway 85 at Stevens Creek. They have that kind yes, of. Yes, uh, I of. yes. If you're going westbound on Stevens Creek, right, right in front of the old Oaks Shopping Center, I think there's one there, kind of a similar situation. Eastbound, right? Eastbound. I was eastbound. thinking westbound. Okay, eastbound. You have to you have to cross the traffic going just going to the on ramp. That's it's also true. Southbound on ramp. Right. So yeah, you think of the kind of thing painted across, like you said. Yeah. Um, I don't really remember what it looks like now, but. Uh, Willow, it's a Willow Road, Menlo Park. As you drive, as you go across 101, I I, I don't remember off the top of my head, but I just remember. Well, that's interesting. Yeah, having uh, broken markings across ramps. Yeah. Well, the thing we did on on Winchester. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, the central expressway. Sort of like yeah. That. yeah, but not such a big deal as 
Hamilton and Seventeen. Right, the real That's challenge. Be. <laughs> right, it is we, we didn't have, the lanes there are already narrow yeah. on Hamilton, whereas uh, Winchester is pretty wide. So this isn't the time to bring it up, and I understand that. But can we get some buffers in there too? Like if we can't get the vertical separation right with some bollards, can we get like two or three feet? Just a nice little diagonal buffer. Is that possible? Um, or is it just going to be straight in kind? What's there? Because what's there is not great. Right, right. Um, it will be very challenging. Like just a few feet. Right, right, right. Um, yeah. Just to have it looked at. Yeah. That's all that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's probably one of those things where you can get it on certain segments. Which would be fine. Maybe, but probably not. It's like Winchester, right? I mean, you've got areas of Winchester where we've got a bike lane in somewhere we had to go back to Sharrows and mm -hmm. it's all the function of how much cross that you're right away with is, right? Yeah, but depending on like what those segments are, it could be pretty valuable. Yes. So. Especially coming off of an expressway or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to start the conversation early. And we pretty much gave the same answer for this with a statement of exception why you couldn't provide state street improvements uh, entirely. So, are there any comments for the panel? Oops, statement of exception. So, it's the same wording. Uh, Just curious for the checklist, do you have to list, like say the project extends through multiple EPCs, do you list each one? It's more like an illustrate, or is it just like, hey, it touches one, we're good? Just a general question. I was looking at it from Campbell's perspective. Gotcha. We, we wanted to highlight what we, <laughs> yeah, we did. We only, we hey, we got one. one. Yes. Right, and it, it would be. Great to just mention it. Yeah. Frankly, we don't know where people go after they leave the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is definitely a point of entry. Um, for folks who eventually want to go to Light Rail or uh, go to work or wherever. Gotcha. Okay. Well, thanks for your patience and going through these two checklists. It's, it's, uh, it wasn't simple. Um, Item number eight is ETA feedback update. Mark here or ETA. Well, um, so there was no meeting in April, but we did have a meeting last week. And actually, what we did, we actually reviewed the, the new um, OBAG o cycle three um, no commerce, the one that you just mentioned tonight. Ah, so you've seen that. Yeah, so we, um, so they kind of give an inside scoop about how they're going to do the point or the point ratings and things like that. And they really sought the feedback and insights from the DPAC members about the form. We had a lot of discussions on maybe changing some of the items within the form. Uh, there was some feedback about, you know, really past projects that were not approved, if they could just somehow be, you know, kind of, could they actually be submitted again through this, you know, new um, form? Um, but I think at the end, the, the BPAC decided to approve. Um, to this new selection criteria without any without any changes. So there was talk about the I think the technical advisory committee had looked at the selection criteria too and had some ideas or changes about that. They did mention that. Um, so sorry, I was like I was at that meeting. So yeah. Um, but did you talk about the fix it first category under the roads category? Is that where that came up? Um, is that on your sheet, Matthew, the fix it first category for the local streets and roads, the PCI 70 requirement? I remember the, there's a group called the CIP working group. I remember that wording. Okay. It stuck to six in my mind, but they, I think they didn't mention it. So yeah. We're having another meeting yeah. next Tuesday. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I think fix it. Yeah, I think it was in there. Because they're, I think BT is trying to use this criteria for like three or four different types of projects. So yeah. fix it first or road rehabilitation projects are subject to a different pot of money, like the old CMAC funds. 
And so they're still putting it through the same criteria, but if they pass, they get first dibs on a different pot of money than, than something like our PDA might get. So they're running a multitude of project types through one selection criteria. It's gonna be a little complicated. It, yeah, that it was sounds my... complicated. Yeah, it's... <laughs> it sounds like a nightmare. It was, yeah, that was my take on it. And um, so I think in the end, the, the BPAP can approve it. Um, and I think what you know, the, the representative from PTA said is that they do provide, and you probably already know this, but they do provide support or they're there to answer any questions right, about as you're filling it, but you probably already know that. So. Yeah, I think I think the thing that we're all concerned about, as, as Matthew alluded to here, is is you know, we're gonna we're all gonna work with VTA. We're gonna make our things as competitive as we can. And VTA sends a recommended list to MTC. MTC still makes the final call, which is kind of a new thing, right? Usually MTC just gives VTA all the latitude, but not anymore. Now MTC wants to see the individual application and approve it before it moves forward. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it seems very complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for putting up with this form and going through it. And now you have the new form that you have to look at too. So, um, but, but I don't think it's a lot of changes. So, but, um, but yeah, that, it seems complicated. So, um, and let's see. And I think they also approved the OVAC 3, uh, or we approved the $10 million that will be used for the CMA. CTA planning and programming activities for the fiscal years of 2023 to 2026. So, yeah, so it's a good discussion. Um, and when it was supposed to be 45 minutes, but it lasted for almost an hour and a half. So, so that's my report for PTA B5. Um, okay, thank you for that. And also, uh, since you were, you were kind of uh, uh, serving the remaining term of, of our uh, Carmen Lino uh, had to step off the yep. BPAC because she moved out of the state, but um, we extended your term for two more years, uh -huh. just so that folks are aware, because um, you just got appointed like um, two months ago. So yeah, in January. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, so item nine, I think we should have. Well, I should have crossed it off the agenda. We're not supposed to have comments that are not agendized. Um, so, anyway, the next meeting, then regular meeting is on the odd number of months, the uh, third Tuesday, Thursday. So it'll be Thursday, July twenty-first. Um, hey, Kathy, I I was supposed to send you. The drawings of um, the West Par Avenue general locations, but I didn't oh, have your yeah. email. I didn't have your email address. I looked at my minutes and I couldn't find it. Oh, okay. But rather than Sorry. broadcast it on public, why don't you email me at the, the following email address? You can send me what your email addresses. So send your email to publicworks at campbellca.gov. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Don't tell the whole world what your yeah. email address is. <laughs> okay. Okay, so that's uh, so if there's yeah. not, no other uh, they already know. No, no other items. It's already out there, right? I will say the meeting is adjourned to 6 15 p.m. Good. Thank you for your attendance. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank Welcome, Renee. Good to see you guys. Good, Good evening. I shall. Bye, Kathy. Thank you all. Bye.